How's it going everyone? My name is Jinjim and welcome back to some Forza Motorsport 6 for a budget track build. I just want to make a good track car for cheap. And the best choice is here. The 1994... 1990 Mazda Miata, the N.A. Miata. As many of you know, I have autocrossed my car multiple times, and you'd be surprised to hear that I've actually beaten a Boss 302 Mustang by an entire second around said track. Now, a lot of you probably don't believe that, because, well, the Boss has, uh, what, five times more power than I do? But it's that rear end from, like, the last century, you know? It's not very good. Pretty much what I'm trying to say is Miatas can be very good on tight tracks for cheap. So that's why we're here building a Miata. I am going to make it look like Phil, car, car, car throttles Phil, rest in peace Phil, you will be back soon, I believe it. But let's get going, we are E288, so we are very, very bad, but I'm pretty much going to try to build this car, and then I'll race it against the stock Mustang, and hopefully it will win, so yeah. That's what we're doing today, boys. In a lot of ways, the supercharger would be better on a track, especially if it's a tight track, but I'm gonna go turbocharger nonetheless, because this is Phil. All right, so we're trying to keep this cheap. I really just want a little bit more than 200 horsepower, so exhaust, better intercooler, and better cooling, and then an intake. And honestly, I'm also going to upgrade the fuel system. 232 horsepower and 200 pound-feet of torque. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Now, Phil does have a nice little roll bar. He does not have a hard top, by the way, but he does have a roll bar. Um, just, mm, there's no, like, mm. It's either everything or nothing. Everything or nothing. Well, we'll put everything then, I guess. Weight reduction is free, man. All right. So, if you want to go fast and you don't have any money, get rid of stuff. Some nice sway bars, otherwise known as anti-roll bars. Some good suspension to also help kill body roll. This car looks so tiny, even in this game. It's fantastic. Uh. Now, since I only have 230 horsepower and I weigh 2,100 pounds, I don't need the best brakes in the world. So I'm just going to do street brakes, pads, lines, fluid. That's it. Now for the drivetrain, I'm getting a better clutch. I know Phil has that. The best track upgrade for any car is tires. We can get 265s on here. However, I'm just going to get 225 because in real life that's pretty much the biggest tire you can fit on a Miata without having to really modify the fenders and whatnot. Also, I don't believe they make 255 or 245 14s uh, like at all. It's not it's not a thing. Oh yeah, that's great. There's no such thing as 225s in the front. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. We'll just uh we'll put uh 215s. And with that we want some grippy tires. Race tires would be better, but this is a budget track build. $10,000 is not cheap. <laughs> so we're going to put sport tire compound on there. Another important thing are wheels. I'm going to try to get wheels that look like Phil's. It's going to be kind of a, an issue, though. All right, those are actually pretty similar. In fact, those are really similar. In fact, I'm going to do those. I'm also going to make them 15s because in real life, no one, no one buys 14s anymore, all right? So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the car. I mean, we're at B560, making 232 horsepower, 200 pound-feet of torque, but we only weigh 2,100 pounds, which is the crazy thing. Obviously, the most important part is looking the parts. So, Phil. Aha! Look! It's Phil! <laughs> that actually looks really good. Uh, no, the wheels definitely aren't perfect, but... I think, I think they're good enough. Everything else looks pretty good, even it has the Moss sticker, the VTEC, and the car throttle. It is missing the plate, but that's eh, okay. I'm not honestly very good at circuit tunes, so I'm gonna lower tire pressure all around, get a little bit more grip. Despite what you might think, camber on a circuit car is good, a little bit. Too much is obviously not good, but a little bit like one degree, two degree, perfect. So I'm gonna go negative one degree all around. I'm gonna stiffen up the anti-roll bars just a little bit, along with the springs, and I'm going to lower the car all the way. I'm gonna leave dampening the way it is now. However, we can adjust it if we've got too much understeer or oversteer. Um, and yeah, the diff is good. You don't want it completely locked, but you don't want it open. I think that's pretty good. All right, let's have a listen to this beastly Miata, eh? See, I think that sounds pretty good. It's smooth, it's clean. It's got a nice little blow-off valve. Oh, not enough popping and crackling, though. And it's not spitting any flames. Which is upsetting. Huh. Okay, well, 
Let's warm these tires up a bit. Oh yeah, plenty of power to do some skids. That's perfect. I think they're pretty warm. Let's see how this car feels. We're on Mazda Laguna Seca. I think that's pretty fitting, considering we are in a Mazda. Oh, a little bit of oversteer when you go on throttle, that is. It is pretty well balanced, though. Oh, yeah. Feels good. This car feels very good, very balanced. It would be better with a little bit more power and race tires, but budget. This is not going to be the best I can get, obviously. Oh, oh, skids for the kids. Perfect turn. Perfect turn. Perfect turn. Perfect turn. Oh god, that was not perfect. <laughs> but yeah, you get the point. It's a very good car. I'm liking it. However, those those side skirts have gotta go. I'm sorry. Ah, oh, that's so much cleaner. It's so much better. Ah, uh, thank you. Alright, here's how this is going to work. I've got four laps to get the best time I can on Mazda Laguna Seca in the Miata. Then I'll do four laps in a Mustang. See which one is better. Let's get started with the Miata, hey? It's sad though, because no matter how good I do, the first lap won't be the best because you start from a dig. So, there's that. This car is, is doing very well. It brakes well, as long as you're careful, because no ABS. I don't think I've gotten a single good turn. Like, they've all been perfect, besides maybe this one. Oh, yeah, no, that one was not perfect. All right, so yeah, I'm gonna get back to you when I get my best lap. And there we are! So the thing that really bugs me about circuit racing is that no matter how well you do, you will always mess up at least one thing on each lap, unless you do like 100 laps, and that really bugs me because there's clearly things I could fix on that lap, especially at the end, but I mean, there's nothing I can do. Four laps, fair and square, so. Alright, here in my moored Fustang, I really hope some of you guys get that joke. Ugh. 535 horsepower and 3,779 pounds. More than double the amount of power, but almost more than double the amount of weight. I'm using the same everything, same mods, same assists, same track, same number of laps, so uh... Ooh. Oh, this thing sounds good. Okay. This wins sound, definitely. Oh my god, yeah, this thing sounds good. <laughs> okay, well. It obviously will have better get up and go in straight lines. But, can it handle the corners? There's a good deal of body roll, which is annoying, especially if you're braking. Very easy to lock up those front wheels. But overall, this, this car actually feels more grippy than the Miata, because that weight on those bigger tires. Oh my god, all right. Brakes are definitely worse than this car. Holy shit. <laughs> that was bad.
so that's that. Then it was pretty clear. It was an entire second slower. Wow, I'm actually, I, I, I'm honestly surprised. What I noticed for the Mustang is that the brakes sucked. Everything else was good. It had a good amount of power. Uh, it gripped up actually surprisingly well around the corners. It's just the brakes were, were bad and it's probably because it's too heavy. The brakes aren't good enough with all that weight and the speed. But yeah, in all honesty, I actually enjoyed driving the Mustang more. It was much easier to drive. It just wasn't as fast. Uh, and yeah, that is kind of surprising. I mean, twice the amount of power, twice the amount of weight. There you go, boys. Power isn't everything. I'm sure many of you probably think I'm quite biased, and well, I am, but please note that I was 100% fair in that test. Ooh, could the Miata drift? Not quite. Doesn't have quite enough power. Oh, God. All right, track day plus drift day, not the same. So, for less money, less power, and less weight, you can have a better car for track day, bro. The little Miata that does. Phil. I mean, look at him. He's so pretty. Uh, now, he's blown up, but that's okay. Hopefully you all did enjoy this video. This car really does actually suck at drifting. If you guys have any other cool little challenges like this for me, leave them down in the comment section below. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, Phil. Oh, you're surprising me there. Ooh. But yeah, guys, I'll see you next time. Make sure to check out my other forms of social media and subscribe. I'll see you next time, guys. Peace out. And have a great back, back, back day. Dead. Also, you should share this so uh, Carth Auto watches it, because uh, that would be pretty cool. So, share. Share a late video. <laughs>